السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وعلى الصفوة من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين Congratulations to all of you my friends on the anniversary of the birthday of the second Imam the second successor to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is Imam Al-Hasan Al-Zaki Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba Alayhi Salam who was uh, born on the 15th of the month of Ramadan in the third year of the Hijrah. So on the second year Imam Ali married Lady Fatima Alayhi Salam on the third year Imam Hassan was born. And let's see what the scholars, transmitters of hadith, Huffaz, Muhaddithin, uh, in the Sunni tradition, in the books of Sahihs, say about Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. They say some interesting things. So let's share them with you. Again, these are the six most important books. Of course, these are not the only books. But these are number one. These are in the first category. There are other books that are below them in importance. But these are the top six ones. So let's begin with the very first important book, and that is Sahih al-Bukhari. And see what he says about Imam Hassan alayhi salam. In one of the narrations, he says, An Usama ibn Zayd, رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أنه كان يأخذه والحسن ويقول اللهم إني أحبهما فأحبهما Oh Lord, I love those two boys and I want you also He would pray to God that God would love them too The same hadith is repeated here رأيت النبي سمعت البراءة رضي الله عنه قال رأيت النبي والحسن بن علي على عاتقه He's carrying Imam Hassan on his shoulder يقول اللهم إني أحبه فأحبه Oh Lord, I love I love him meaning this boy Hassan and Hassan was boy because um, when the Prophet died Imam Hassan was only seven years old فأحبه Oh Lord, you love him too and of course, we read in the history that Imam Hassan in his physical complexion, he resembled his grandfather, the Prophet. أخبرني أنس قال لم يكن أحد أشبه بالنبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من الحسن بن علي. Nowhere had strong resemblance to the Prophet than Hassan عليه السلام. But here there is a hadith. In the same book, in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, Babu Manaqib al-Hasani wal Hussein radi Allahu anhuma. The chapter about the virtues of Imam Hassan and Hussein. He says, "Sami'tu al-Nabiyya, sami'a Aba Bakr. Aba Bakr is one of the companions. Sami'tu al-Nabiyya ala al-Minbar sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the pulpit. He was standing on the pulpit." وَالْحَسَنُ إِلَىٰ جَنْبِهِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ النَّاسِ مَرَّةً وَإِلَيْهِ مَرَّةً So the Prophet is sitting on the member of the pulpit. So Imam Hassan is sitting next to him. And one time the Prophet glances at Hassan and one time at the public, at the people who are sitting and listening to the Prophet. And then وَيَقُولُ Ibni Hada Sayyidun, my son, this, not my grandson. Because the Prophet himself says, every children belong to their biological father. Except Hassan and Hussein, Ana Abu Huma. Yes, they have been begotten through Ali and Fatima, but the only exception is that I am their father. So you can call them my children. He's a grandfather, he's supposed to call them. My grandchildren, Ahfadi, but he would call Hassan and Hussein Ibnai, my two sons, or Ibni, my son. 
And this is amazing. It never happened with anyone. A grandfather calls his children, my grandchildren. But the prophet would call his grandchildren, my children. And he says, this is an exception. I, I am the only one who has right to call Hassan and Hussein my children because Quran said so to him. God said in chapter Al-Kawthar, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرْ God is giving him glad tidings that we're going to give you an abundance of goodness, an abundance of children through Fatima alayhi salam. So they are considered his children. So he said, the Prophet, Ibni hadha Sayyidun, my son, this is a master, Sayyid. وَلَعَلَّ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُصْلِحْ بِهِ بَيْنَ فِئَتَيْنْ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and may God, may God bring reforms and peace through him between two groups of Muslims. This hadith is problematic, my friends. You smell corruption in this hadith. Why? Because this hadith, and of course we know Bukhari, when he wrote his book, as I said in the past, Bukhari, when he wrote his book, there was a distance between him and the Prophet. He didn't see the Prophet. This is Bukhari. Bukhari was born in 194, almost 183 years after the death of the Prophet he was born. And he died in 256. So he started collecting these narrations more than 200 years after the departure of the Prophet of Islam. So he didn't see the Prophet. He saw some people who report these narrations from the Prophet. This hadith, which I just read, which claims that the Prophet said Imam Hassan is going to create peace between two groups, is problematic. Because this was made up during the time of Bani Umayyah by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Muawiyah was so generous on hiring storytellers and liars and fabricators to make up hadith. Muawiyah stayed in Damascus for 40 years and he launched a huge propaganda machine to consolidate his rule. At that time there are no Fox News, no CNN, no newspapers, no media, no social media. So the only social media was to bring some smart intelligent uh, manipulative people to fabricate hadith on behalf of the Prophet and then spread the hadith and many people not all some people were smart and too intelligent to believe these storytellings but others were naive because they see someone who saw the Prophet Abu Huraira saw the Prophet though he saw the Prophet only one year and seven months only only one year and seven months and he narrated about 6,000 hadiths from the Prophet. So when they see someone who saw the Prophet and he's telling them this story, they think and they assume that this story is credible, is trustworthy, whereas the story is fabricated. Being paid for, have you seen sometimes paid ad, paid advertisements? This is exactly what Muawiyah would do. Paid advertisements. So he hired people, he asked them to fabricate hadiths to consolidate his rule, to say that, that, that he is a legitimate Islamic group. He's a legitimate Muslim. So when he was fighting with Imam Hassan, he's legitimate. And God sent Imam Hassan to make peace between himself, meaning Imam Hassan and his army, and the army of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So this hadith is problematic, my friends. Tries to give credibility to Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, who hijacked the Khilafah, no doubt about it. Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan did not submit to Imam Ali, the fourth caliph. He didn't submit to him. And then there was a war of Safin. Long story, long story. And after that, after the assassination of Imam Ali, in year 40, on the 21st of Ramadan, in Masjid al-Kufa, Imam Hassan became the Caliph. Muslims elected 
and paid allegiance to Imam Hassan, but still Muawiyah would not pay allegiance. And Muawiyah was launching war against Imam Ali first and Imam Hassan second. So he's illegitimate. Beside, my friends, in the Battle of Safin, the Prophet said to Ammar ibn Yasir, Ammar ibn Yasir is one of the most devout companions of the Prophet, one of the most sincere and loyal Sahaba of the Prophet. But unfortunately, history is not doing him justice because he chose to stand with the truth. He did not choose to be with the status quo, with the majority. He chose to be with the minority. Therefore, the political establishment do not like him because he spoke the truth. And always political establishment, establishments do not like people who advocate truth and justice. From day one until the last day, this is the same story. Political establishments want someone who kiss up for them, who fabricate lies on their behalf, lies on their behalf, who supports them. But if someone wants to criticize them, they turn against him. They malign him. And this is what happened to Ammar. In this book, <clears throat> let's go to the sixth book, and that is the book of Ibn Majah. Ibn Majah is one of the uh, <coughs> is one of the Sahihs. One of the books that's considered credible, Sunan Ibn Majah. Al Hafiz, Lil Hafiz, Abi Abdullah, Muhammad Ibn Yazid, Al Rabai, Ibn Majah Al Qazwini, who was born in 209 Hijri and died 273 Hijri. Okay? About 60 some years. Ibn Majah, when he comes to Ammar ibn Yasir, who was murdered by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan by the army of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan in the Battle of Safin. See what the Prophet says about Ammar ibn Yasir. فَاسْتَأْذَنَ عَمَّارُ ibn Yasir. This is Hadith 146. فَضْلُ Ammar ibn Yasir, the virtue of Ammar. This is Sunan ibn Majah, one of the most important books in the Sunni tradition, in the school of Khulafa. فَاسْتَأْذَنَ عَمَّارُ ibn Yasir. He sought permission to see the Prophet. The Prophet said, give him permission. Marhaban Welcome to the one who is good and who is made to be good. Another hadith. Sami'tu Rasulullah yaqul, mulia ammarun imanan ila mushashihi. Ammar has been filled, overwhelmed with faith, right to his roots, to his core. Mushashihi means the asl, the root, the core. Ammar is filled with goodness. And this man was murdered by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Okay? And then, and then my friends, another books which I unfortunately don't have in this library here with me, the books that speaks about Ammar and about Muawiyah, Sunni books, those are senior huffaz, transmitters of hadith Ibn Sa'ad in his tabaqat al tabaqat al kubra al Ibn Sa'ad one of the most credible books in the Sunni tradition Ibn Hajar in his book Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb uh, al Dhahabi in his book Mizan al I'tidal and al Dhahabi is Syrian from Sham those say the hadith idha ra'aytum the hadith of the prophet is telling his companions once you see Muawiyah on my pulpit Climbing my pulpit, my member. Ida ra'aytum mu'awiyata ala minbari faqtuluh. In another verse, in another version, farjumuh. Either stone him or kill him. This is what the Prophet said about Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So this hadith that says, hadith that suggests that Imam Hassan is going to make peace between two groups is not credible. Because it is giving legitimacy to Muawiyah. It's saying that Muawiyah is Islamic in his character. Muawiyah is acceptable to the Prophet, whereas the case is different. Then we come, my friends, to Sahih Muslim and see what Sahih 
Muslims say about Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Here, let's share it with you, my friends. This is Sahih Muslim. Okay. And here, Babu Fadail al Hassani wal Hussein, the chapter on the virtues of Hassan and Hussein. And Abi Huraira an in Nabi in Nahukale li Hassanin, Allahumma inni uhibbuhu fa ahibbahu wa ahibba man yuhibba. This is important. Bukhari did not mention this because Bukhari was under scrutiny. And when it comes to Ahlul Bayt, he was not, not so generous with them. But later, Huffaz, like Nasa'i, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Abu Dawood, Muslim, Ibn al-Hajjaj al-Qushayri, those, they had some freedom to speak the truth on behalf of Ahlul Bayt. Bukhari did not have that freedom because of the political establishment of that time. And remember, they all wrote their books during the Abbasides, the Abbasid period, which chased Ahlul Bayt and murdered many of them. Many of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, beginning with Imam Ja'far al Sadiq, till the last Imam, the one before the last Imam, Hassan al Askari, were murdered by the Caliphs of Bani al Abbas. These books were written during that time, a time where anti Ahlul Bayt sentiment in the political establishment was on the rise. And it was a taboo to mention Ahlul Bayt or to speak on their favor. And once you speak in their favor, if, even if you bring one hadith, immediately you are called Rafidhi. Rafidhi, Shi'i, you are Rafidhi. Because you brought one single hadith of the Prophet on their behalf. So listen, what Muslim says here is adding to what Bukhari said. Bukhari said, the Prophet said, Allahumma inni uhibbuhu fa ahibbah. Oh Lord, I love Hassan and I want you to love Hassan too. But Muslim is saying something else. Wa ahibba man yuhibbah. Oh Lord, love. This is where I'm putting my finger here. Wa ahibba man yuhibbah. And I want you to love whoever love Hassan alayhi salam. Now let me ask you. Did Muawiyah love Imam Hassan when he was fighting him? Just ask yourself this question. You don't have to study much history. Here comes the role of reason and intellect and common sense. When the Prophet is saying, O oh Lord, I want you to love Hassan because I love Hassan and I want you to love those who love Hassan. Okay, this is in Sahih Muslim. Now ask yourself, when Muawiyah was fighting Imam Hassan, did he love him? Did he like him? If you love someone, you go and, and, and launch war against him and you call him names? Definitely you don't. So this is one of the violations of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. He was hating Imam Hassan. He hated him and he hated his father before. Okay, so this hadith by Muslim is written in different, different versions here. Again, there is another, another hadith here. And then my friends, Sahih Muslim, and I have to salute Muslim Ibn al-Hajjar al-Qushayri. He had the guts to defy the political establishment of that time. He had the guts, and I have to salute him. And may God bless him for what he said. Listen to Fadail, Babu Fadail Ahli Bayt al Nabi, when he speaks about the virtue of the family of the Prophet. Qalat Aisha, this is Hadith 6261. Qalat Aisha, Qalat Aisha, Kharaja al Nabi Gadatan wa Alayhi Mirtun, Murahalun min Sha'rin Aswadin, Faja al Hassan ibn Alifa at Khalahu. The Prophet covered Imam Hassan. ثم جاء الحسين فدخل معه. Then Hussein followed. The Prophet brought him under that cover. ثم جاءت فاطمة فأدخلها. Then Fatima followed them. ثم جاء علي فأدخله. Then Ali came last. So the Prophet brought him under that cover. ثم قال. Then the Prophet said, إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا. 
So the verse of Taqheer in 33.33, Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 33, is an exclusive club. It's not open for subscriptions, anyone. Only those people, the Prophet, Imam Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. Then in the same book, Sahih Muslim, in the same book of Sahih Muslim, this is Hadith 6225. Okay, my friends, the Prophet, فحمد الله وأثنى عليه. This hadith is narrated by Zayd ibn Arqam, my friend. Hadith narrated by Zayd ibn Arqam, one of the important companions of the Prophet. He said the Prophet gave a speech, and he said, فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ يُوشَكُ أَنْ يَأْتِي رَسُولٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ فَأُجِيبُ I'm a human being, I have to die. Almost, it's very near that a messenger of God would come, and I have to respond, meaning go back to my Lord and die. وَأَنَا تَارِكٌ فِيكُمْ ثِقْلَيْنِ and I'm leaving behind me, there would be no vacancy, no vacuum. I'm going to leave behind me two weighty things. Thiqlain. Awaluhuma kitabullahi fihi al-huda wa nur The first is the book of God, which has guidance and light. Fakhudu bi kitabillah wa stamsiku bih. Hold fast in the book of God. Fahatha ala kitabillahi wa raghaba fihi thumma qal وَأَهْلُ بَيْتِي After the book of God, أَهْلُ بَيْتِي My family. Most of the people now who read the hadith in many Muslim countries, in the mosques, in the Friday prayers, in the radio, on television, they teach the kids in the school, كتاب الله وسنتي. But Sahih Muslim says, كتاب الله وأهل بيتي. And then the Prophet continued to say, this is very important, أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي three times three times repeating the sentence I remind you God in my family meaning take care of my family take care of my family take care of my family three times so someone said ask someone ask يا زيد يا زيد أليس نساؤه من أهل بيته Aren't his wives are considered part of Ahlul Bayt? He says, Nisa'uhu min Ahli Baytihi. They are part of his family. Walakin Ahla Baytihi. But what is meant in this verse? What is meant in the hadith of the Prophet that I am reminding you of my family does not include the wives. This is the hadith. Wa innama walakin Ahlu Baytihi man hurima sadaqata ba'da. Those who are not allowed to take sadaqa. So the, the inquirer asked Zayd ibn Arqam, وَمَنْ هُمْ? Who are those? قَالْ هُمْ آلُ عَلِيٍ This is the family of the Prophet. آلُ عَلِيٍ وَآلُ عَقِيلٍ وَآلُ جَعْفَرٍ وَآلُ عَبَّاس Those are the family of the Prophet. Imam Ali and his family, his brother Aqil and his family, his brother Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and his family, and Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet. Then you come to hadith, another hadith, which is 6228, same page, Sahih Muslim. فَقُلْنَا مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ نِسَاؤُهُ O Zayd, are the family of the Prophet, Ahlul Bayt, which are mentioned in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ Are his wives included in this verse? قَالَ لَا قَالَ لَا They are not. Aim Allah by God. Aim Allah, it's an oath. Inna al tatakunu ma'ar rajul al asra min al dhar. A wife could spend many years with her husband, many decades. Thumma yutalliquha. At the end, he might divorce her. Fatarji'u ila abiha wa qawmiha. She goes back to her father, to her family, to her community. So she's not, she cannot be eternally part of the man. Okay? Ahlu Baytihi, rather, Ahlul Bayt, Asluhu, the root of the person. Wa usbatuhu alladheena hurimu sadaqata min ba'dih. And those people who have been forbidden to take sadaqa. So these are two books now. Let's go to a third book. How much time we have? Let's get, go to a third book, my friends. And that is, that is Jami'ut Tirmidhi, page 
2041. Interesting here. This is Sunan al Tirmidhi, Jami al Tirmidhi. Okay? He says about the story of the Prophet covering Imam Ali and Fatima and Hassan and Hussein under the blanket. And um, قالت أم سلمة وأنا معهم يا رسول الله. The story from beginning. Let me read it. Okay. نزلت هذه الآية. أم سلمة says. أم سلمة said, the Prophet was in my house. This verse came. إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا. فدع النبي فاطمة فاطمة وحسن وحسين فجللهم بكساء وعلي خلف ظهره فجلله بكساء. He brought Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and Ali, who was standing behind. He covers them with the clock. ثم قال اللهم هؤلاء أهل بيتي فأذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا. Those are my family. Remove any abomination from them and purify them with absolute purification. قالت أم سلمة. أم سلمة is a noble wife of the Prophet. Wonderful wife. She came, said, وَأَنَا مَعَهُمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Am I with them, part of them, those who have been purified? قَالَ أَنْتِ عَلَى مَكَانِكِ وَأَنْتِ إِلَى خَيْرِ You stay where you are, but you are good. أَنْتِ عَلَى خَيْرِ You are not part of those. So the wives of the Prophet are not part of this ayah. This is Jami' al-Tirmidhi. This is an important book in the Sunni tradition. And then the Prophet said in another hadith in the same book, again, I'm going to leave behind two things. The book of God, Tarikun Fikum Ma in Tamasektum Bihilan Tadilu Badi, Ahaduhuma Adum in Al Akhar, Kitab Allah, Hablum Mamdudum in Asama il Al Ard, Wa Itrati Ahla Baiti, Walen Yatafarraka. The book of God and my family are not going to depart. Hatta Yerida Ali Al Hawd, Fanduru Kaifa Tahlufuni Fihima. They are not going to part. Until both of them, the book of God and, and my family are going to arrive on the pond of Kothar on the day of judgment. So see how you deal with them after me. The Prophet is telling his community. This is in Jami' at tirmidhi Okay? And then my friends, regarding Imam Hassan in Jami' at tirmidhi الحسن وكان يقول لفاطمة ادعي لي ابنية call me call my two sons not my grandsons very amazing the prophet is not calling Hassan and Hussein grandsons ادعي لي ابنية call me my two sons فيشمهما he would smell them ويضمهما إليه and he would give them a hug okay what else? What else? Let's go to Ibn Majah al Qazwini and see what he says about Imam Hassan and Hussein. Because some people say Muawiyah is Caliph and we have to respect him. And Yazid also is Caliph, his successor of the Prophet. But see what, what the Prophet said about Imam Hassan and Hussein. This is Ibn Majah. This is Ibn Majah. Okay? من أحب الحسن والحسين فقد أحبني. Whoever loves Hassan and Hussein would love me as if he's loving me. ومن أبغضهما أن whoever hates Hassan and Hussein فقد أبغضني. Whoever hates Hassan and Hussein as if he's hating me, hating the Prophet. Let me ask you: When Muawiyah was fighting Imam Hassan, did he love him or did he hate him? You can give me the answer yourself. When Yazid murdered Imam Hussein, did he love Imam Hussein and murder him? Or it was otherwise? You can give me the answer. My friends, Islam is based on common sense. If we don't use this brain, we're going to be held accountable before God. And these are the narrations. These are not Shia sources. None of them. None of them. These are the collection of six books which I adore and I respect okay and I use for the last 25 years I've been doing the research and I find these hadiths 
in favor of the truth and justice and Ahlul Bayt in these books. Congratulations on the birth of Imam Hassan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.